In this video, we're going to be mounting the Minn Kota Deckhand 40 electric anchor on this particular boat. I've mounted these before and I got a couple tips and tricks for you that will help you with your mounting. I'm going to give you a couple of those up front first. This does not come with any sort of mounting hardware. Now, what I recommend is stainless steel hardware. That way it's never going to rust. You can just go to your local hardware store and uh, get your stainless steel hardware from there. Second thing is you're going to want some rubber washers. You don't want to uh, just tighten this down right on top of your boat, whether it's carpet or aluminum. Uh, you want rubber washers in between. That's going to aid in a little bit of vibration dampening. It's going to add life to the motor. Now once you figure out the position, uh, you got to remember that this here needs to hang off the edge of your boat by about nine inches from here to here. But once you get your position uh, kind of figured out where you need to, maybe you need to move your trolling motor, or maybe you need to move, move some things, uh, you're going to want to take this cover off. And the instructions say there's only two screws to remove to remove the cover. That's not true, there's three. There's one on each side, and then there's one back here by the switch. So you're going to take these three screws out, not two, and that's going to allow you to lift the cover off. Now it's still going to be connected, and it's up to you if you want to you know, disconnect all these plugs and then take the cover completely off. But I would take a picture of all the plugs on where everything goes, just so you have it for reference when you put it back together. Now it's a little easier to take the cover completely off, but you can mount it uh, with the cover half off like this. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and get to this point, and then we'll go on to the next step. So once you get this located exactly where you want it, uh, make sure there's no obstructions like underneath the deck. Uh, you can take off this panel right here and look underneath there and make sure that you're not going to drill into some wiring or something like that. And once you know that's all safe and sound, you can either use like one of these white uh, Sharpie markers or use a black one. And then whatever mounting holes you're going to use, just color that in with your Sharpie. And use the outer most holes that you can. Now, in the past, and I might have to do it on this boat here too, uh, if you can't really get to a good location, or maybe something's blocking it, whatever the reason, you can always drill somewhere else on this davit or on this base unit. There's lots of solid sheet metal where you can add a hole uh, to move a mounting location. You don't have to use every little mounting location that's already pre-drilled. You can drill your own holes in order to kind of custom fit to your boat. So get all your locations marked and then you're going to move the unit out of the way and then you're going to drill all the holes that you can in those locations. And if you're going to drill in another location, wait until you get this bolted back on and then just drill right through uh, the metal and your boat at the same time when you put on those bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and then drill the holes. So I suggest when you drill these holes, start out with a small drill bit, maybe like a 3 16 uh, eighth inch drill bit to drill all the pilot holes first. That will prevent your drill bit from walking around on you. And then go up to you know, whatever size drill bit you're going to use. This is a 21 64 And the bolts I'm using are 5 16 I would not use quarter inch. Use 5 16 or 3 8 You may have to drill the holes out uh, on the unit if you're going to go to use any bigger bolts. So let's say you want to mount it like super secure, you know, just drill out the mounting holes in the base unit and go to bigger bolts if you want. But I found that the 5 16 uh, hold it just fine. So we're going to go ahead and start drilling these holes. So once you get your holes drilled out, you're going to be left with some aluminum shavings and wood shavings. And I suggest you get your shot back, suck all this up uh, from top side and bottom side. So 
So here's an example of what I mean about you don't have to use all those pre-drilled mounting holes. I like to have one back here towards the back in the center. And once you have it you know, semi-mounted, you just drill right through, put your bolt in there, and now you have a little more secure mounting. Whether you have maybe an obstruction underneath, uh, but you can just pretty much drill through wherever you want if you need to move your mounting locations. So once all your mounting hole lo locations are done, then I lay these rubber washers right over top of the holes. And that's the kind of rubber washers I use. Like I said before, it does a couple things. It raises the unit up off the carpet just a little bit, so water, if it does get under here, it doesn't just sit under there. It gives it a little air uh, circulation so the water doesn't rot out, uh, you know, whatever's, whatever's underneath here, whether it's wood or whatever. And it also gives a little bit of anti-vibration. So get those in place, and then you're going to put your bolts through your mounting locations and set the unit right on top. So once you have all your bolts through the holes, make sure you use a washer underneath, top and bottom. And then I like to use nylon lock nuts. So I'll go ahead and put the washers underneath, put the lock nuts on, and tighten all this down. So once you have all of your bolts tight, you can go ahead and remount uh, the cover. So take a look at the picture on your phone and make all your electrical connections again. And then we're going to install the three screws holding the cover on. Okay, I'm going to give you a little tip. It doesn't say to do this in the manual, but I've seen it happen in the past. These two blue wires right here are actually kind of long. And I've seen them catch the rope and get tangled up in a rope and they rip right off the terminals. So get yourself a little zip tie. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see a little better. I'm talking about these two thin blue wires. Zip tie those up to uh, the red and black right here so that they stay out of the way. They're about an inch and a half too long. That's just a little tip I've learned from uh, a past mistake. So once you get your cover back on, you're going to want to hook up power to this. And then in order to get uh, some rope out, because you're going to need to tie up your anchor next. Just hit the down button and then pull on the rope and it will come right out. Peel off about maybe about three feet of rope. So once you have your anchor all tied up, to test it out just hit the down button. And as soon as it hits the bottom it's going to automatically stop. Now there's a couple key things. You need at least a 20 pound anchor or that won't work correctly. And number two, when you hit your up button, as soon as you let go of the up button, it's going to stop. So if you just push it in, as soon as you let go, it's going to stop. So it's important to know that this, once it comes up and that flips over, it does not stop by itself. It will keep pulling until you let your finger off of the switch. So as you come up, as soon as you see that flip over, you need to let go. Otherwise, it's going to keep pulling this tight. I wish it had an auto off feature, but it doesn't. So the last thing you need to know, if you're wondering what this is, it's basically you can attach this chain to your shackle on the anchor and that's to prevent it from falling out, uh, say traveling down the road or traveling across the lake. Now, me personally, I take these off and I don't ever use them. What I do, I'll just let out, you know, three, four feet of uh, anchor line and then I take the anchor and set it inside my boat for travel. So it's going to look something like this and the anchor is inside the boat floor. So if I'm trailering it or if I'm going across the water, I know for sure it's not going to uh, let loose and fall out. And then I also don't have to mess with this. Now that's going to be a personal preference. Some people will want to use the shackle uh, and keep it up here in position. 
Uh, but I like to keep the anchor on the floor with no tension on the rope and I think that's going to save a little bit of motor wear and tear. Other than that, uh, it's all mounted, ready to go. I uh, hope my tips and tricks kind of helped you out as far as using stainless steel hardware, uh, using the rubber washers, and always stowing the anchor inside the boat instead of stowing it on here. Because, you know, if you're bouncing down the road, all that weight is going up and down on the front of your boat. I, just, I think that's bad practice to keep it up there. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you learned something from it. And thank you for watching.